Hey guys, welcome to 6 Minutes for Thursday, November 3rd. I'm Jason Fulmore, SD Russell, and today we are talking Class 5A preseason rankings in the state of Alabama. Top 10 and my conversation with Alabama Wrestling Forum's Jackson Bast. Before we get to that, uh, just a shout out to Belmont Abbey, which beat um, St. Andrews yesterday. Uh, and good to see some of those uh, freshmen on the mat for Belmont Abbey that uh, we've watched um, over the last few years in high school down here in the Southeast. So anyway, uh, good good match there. No matches on the, the docket tonight. And um, this will be the last uh, six minutes until next week when we will drop Alabama 6A and 7A to begin the week next week. The reason for that is that I will be down in Jacksonville uh, covering the um, battle in the River City uh, with Wisconsin, Buffalo, um, Iowa State, Campbell, UTC, Little Rock as they wrestle duels, and, uh, which would be a, a great time. So um, yeah, this will be the last one for this week, but uh, yeah, Jackson Bass and I talk a little bit about 5A and the split between 5A and 6A in Alabama and who are the teams to uh, keep an eye on. Uh, always interested in your feedback, so definitely let us know what, uh, what you got wrong, what you got right, whether you, you agree or disagree, it's all good. We, we definitely want to hear it. So um, yeah, without further ado, here is uh, my conversation with Jackson. Yep. All right, here with Jackson Bast, and we are talking, oh, I'm sorry, Alabama Wrestling Forums. Jackson Bass, Bluefield heavyweight Jackson Bass, right? Yep. Busy fall for you, man. Um, you got a lot going on. Oh, definitely do. You know, fall is where we end up having the most amount of sports, obviously. Uh, I'm, a I'm able to cover all the sports here with, with sports broadcasting or, or content creation. So wrestling's not the only one that I get to do, uh, but it's my my favorite. So Yeah, and, and you... I know your name on the conference list, which is totally awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank um, you. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching you compete a little bit this, this fall and, and maybe, or this, this winter. And I don't know if we'll cross paths. I'm, I'm hoping to see you maybe against life or Bruce Parker or somewhere down here, but um, best of luck to you. Thank you. Um, all right. So we're jumping to 5A and, and, you know, we've got this weird thing going on now because, we had 5A, 6A for the last couple of years, and we got kind of excited because 5A, 6A was lights out. Like, I mean, the level of competition was fantastic. Now we have 5A and a 6A tournament, um, and that has a huge impact. Um, you know, not, not, to, not to, not to be a downer, but the truth is, is that you've now taken the same number of teams and spread them out over two classifications. And and now we're going to see some other teams break into your top ten here. So, tell me a little bit about just how you feel about the split of five A six. So, honestly, a couple years back when I heard that they were going to merge, I was not a humongous fan of it. Um, now I ended up learning that I was going to eat those words because it gave us some of the best rivalries, some of the best matches we saw for two years. Yeah, it I did. Some of the, the craziest stuff. I remember during that COVID year, five uh, six A was at the Von Braun. That was the tournament. Uh, I got to be there day one, but I've heard that everything else about that tournament was absolutely electrifying. And, and like I said, we got to see some big matches that we would never have gotten to see unless it happened. So now I'm I'm really sad to see that it, it is no more. Uh, I I had kind of caught wind that this probably was going to happen after the, the the merger happened that it was probably going to split up so although short lived it's going to be a very big part of Alabama wrestling history i agree and and i don't care about like the 32 man brackets and those sorts of things it didn't bother me at all like let let 32 men in like let let them have that many take qualifiers that's fine because by the time you got to the quarters and the semis and and the finals in 5a 6a you were talking absolutely lights out wrestling and it was just some really really good um action as, as you just alluded to so all right so now we split the 5a and as a result of splitting splitting the 5a 
the points are going to be a little bit interesting to kind of see who has those returning points because we now have a different kind of format, different kind of bracket. So comparing those points, is that kind of, did, did the returning points still play a huge role in how you came up with your top 10? Um, for, for not who my top 10 were, but definitely where those top 10 were going to be. Yeah. Um, there were a couple teams who were at the, at the bottom of, of the top 10 that I was like, I could kind of see it going this way or this way, but it really came down to the returners for both sides as it does every year when it comes to figuring out your top 10. Okay. All right. And, and you only give me one. So this is, this is a combination of dual and tournament, but I think if we're going to lean one way or the other, we're leaning more towards tournament as far as the top 10, not dual. Is that correct? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the bottom five of your top 10. And starting at 10, we've got Beauregard, St. Clair County, Southside Gadsden, Alexandria comes in at number seven, and Shelby County comes in at number six. So without talking about in detail about all five of those teams or anything like that, I think the question I have is, as it relates to 5A is, is was there, I mean, obviously Shelby County is, is six, they're the closest to the top five. Is there a lot of gap in there, or are those teams pretty close to them? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that Shelby County, honestly, as as I looked at, at who was coming back and, and where they kind of filled out, I honestly could see Shelby County getting as close as, you know, three, maybe four. I if agree. They, if yeah. they can be really well, I've got some really big returners. Um, they got a couple more kids that i could see you know maybe they placed fifth but i could see them going higher um so yeah i would say that i would say that shelby county may be able to compete now i do think there's kind of a gap between shelby county and alexandria and the rest of the top 10 so i mean that's where i'd say where my gap probably lies the most got it got it well and, and, and to be fair i mean alexandria i mean it's their first year in so many years without Jaden new um, you know, so they'll have to turn to, to, to some new faces and they've got some really good kids. Don't get me wrong in the room, but it's a long time since, uh, they've had, you know, they've had to rely on a group of people with, without Jaden new being there. So that, that's a thing, right? I mean, <laughs> no, no, a hundred percent Jaden elevated that room. I mean, obviously when Jaden, so to give you guys a reference, I'm a junior in college, and bef my freshman year of high school was Jaden's seventh grade year. So I've only been wrestling in high school as long as Jaden's been competing in the AHSA. So it's it's been you know a while, and they've had some other studs, um, Fletcher Swindle, mm -hmm. Christian Knopp, oh, uh, both the the Whitaker brothers. So, I mean, it, 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 it's a dynasty. Right. That... It, it, they've got a great program. And it wasn't oh, like yeah. to say they don't have a great program. But, but Jake New's been there for a long time. And it will be uh, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, a, a, a team. Because when we, at least for the last five years, you've associated Alexandria and Jake New as one. And this that won't be the case this year. Yeah. I mean, when I talk, I talked to Jaden a lot in, in the season last year because he was telling me to constantly look at Preston Jones because Preston Jones had had plays, but he hadn't been a title contender. So he said that he, he really did feel like he was kind of passing the torch on to Preston. So I would say that there is some faith in the longevity of that program's success. Yeah, no, I, I and, and they have it. I mean, they've got great kids oh, in yeah. the room, great coaching staff and everything else. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be awesome. All right. So um was there a surprise in that bottom five of the top ten that you were like, oh, really? I don't want to be in the top ten. Like I wasn't I was I, I wasn't expecting them to be in the top ten. Uh I would say if if you weren't somebody who, who went and looked at the team scores from last year and really analyzed them, I would not have assumed Beauregard would be in my top ten. Because uh, I don't think they had a single state placer, but they've got four returning people. 
Uh, and of these four Turner, I know I know a couple of them have been wrestling in the off season quite a bit, performing pretty well. Um, so I'm kind of excited. Uh, it's kind of a young squad, uh, but it will be led by a senior, Jacob Clark from Beauregard. I know that he is very, you could see him on social media everywhere. Uh, <laughs> he, he's very, very good about tagging me. So I ended up reposting all this stuff, but cool. I'm really excited to see, see if they can really kind of give it the top 10. I always loved seeing who my, my 10th person is. Cause that's never t- the, the ten, number 10 person is never the same person. Right. It's all. It's always somebody who you just don't expect, uh, and I kind of like that. I, I kind of want to root for the underdog when it comes to this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and 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 see if, if maybe you know they come in at number ten, but they climb to eight, they climb to seven, they climb to six. I mean, you know, we all get you know very much fixated on who's going to win and who's going to be whatever in that race. But you know, as a as a former coach, you know, cracking the top ten and climbing your way into the conversation is so important for a program to feel good about a program, it's continued development. And uh, and I think that that's pretty cool, you know, to see that. And that's one of the things I actually like about splitting the classifications because now you get to talk about more teams, which is, you know, a, a positive. Uh, I think there are some negative things. I think there's some challenges with splitting them, but I think that's a very much a positive. All right, so your number five team, is the Corey Land, my, the minus Corey Land Moody Blue Devils, right? It, it is. It is. Um, I mean, I, I know that people might be like, well, why are you? I feel like people might get on to me for giving them a little too much credit, but this is still a very tough squad. Uh, I know they graduated uh, four guys, um, but I, I honestly, this is this is a team that's reloaded year after year after year. So I could definitely still see them. And 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 it's 5A2. So they placed top 10 over the entire tournament. I still see them reloading and, and, and kind of pushing it through there. So, yeah. I mean, we talked about Jake New. We just spent a little bit of time talking about Jake New. This is the first time that Moody hasn't had a land, Michael or Corey, in a lineup for a long time. So... It, it, it's going to be a new experience for them as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I would say those Moody boys are probably the most resilient group of kids I've ever seen. Because as long as I've been there, I think they've had probably – and it's not on them. It's the fact that they're so successful. I think they've had four coaches since I've been in high school. Um, and, and, and they're still competing every year. I mean, the year after they – they won state. They kind of dropped off, but then they picked right back up. Like they might have a rebuilding year, but honestly, it's just they've got that that depth in the room. Yeah, that's yeah. No, you're right. Um, the the Moody kids certainly come to compete and all those sorts of things, and they do have new kids. Like, and, and one of the things that I remember was probably maybe Corey's junior year. I went and watched actually a duel with them in Asheville and things like that, and it was. It was really interesting because the team itself with, with Ryan Summerlin and, and Corey were, were doing a ton of coaching of the young guys. And I think that's so important to that culture. And those young guys are now the next step as far as Moody goes. And they come in at number five. But they're trailing one of my favorite teams in 5A, and that is Scottsboro coming in at number four, which I think Scottsboro – has a high ceiling, and I, I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. I think they might be, according to you, ranked a little bit low. That's just me. That's my opinion. What do you think? Uh, no, obviously, Scottsboro has been a very, very household name in the state of Alabama for as long as I've been around, even right. even before that. Uh, Coach Staten has done a fantastic job with that program. Uh, he's produced some of the best wrestlers. You talk about Brandon Womack, Colton Clark. Brett Clark, so many of some of the top guys. You know, you did back, – back when I started wrestling, if you heard that you had Scottsboro on your schedule, you did not want to wrestle them. It, <laughs> it, it, it was, you know, Eric Schenkel's in that deadly cradle or, or, or something else. But the reason – okay, so then I, I kind of have to argue why I, I put them a little low, and it's definitely because of the returners. Okay. Because because Clinton Stewart 
state finalist, got him 22 points. He's not returning. And then Colby Clark, who's been a multiple time state placer for the Wildcats, that's 13 points. He comes down. Now, I'm not saying that between John Stewart and Stone Stanton, that they can't bring it back together because they had a lot of qualifiers that didn't place. And we talked about it in another video how just being there one year makes you so much more deadly the next year. Right, right. Well, and and, and I've watched I, I watched John Stewart this uh, up at the Grappler Ball Classic. He wrestled super. I expect him to play, but but you're right in that you're not going to win with two, right? You're gonna you're gonna need those other points to come through, and you can't put up a zero at the state tournament. Um, they're going to need those points if they're going to break into that top three. And I, I agree with you. Um, it's just really interesting. So number three is a really good team, another really good team, and that is Jasper. So, well, I mean, yeah, well, Cole Carter on that team. This is, a, this is a tough squad from top to bottom. Are they close to climbing to the top of five? Okay, so I would say that it's 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 it, it, it will come back to it, but I would say it's probably Arab, your two through four, and then and then there's a little bit more of a gap. But I would say that I don't think anybody's going to touch Arab in five A this year. All right, so so we let the cat out of the bag in that Arab is one. Oh, Gulf Shorts. No, it's okay. It's good. It's good. Gulf Shorts is two. Jasper's three. Scottsboro is four. And I agree with. You. Uh, so actually. So in my opinion, Arab, I mean, boy, I mean, that's just that's just a phenomenal program. And every, I don't think there's no doubt, any doubt that anybody that everybody is chasing now. Um, how close it, it, is Gold Shores, Jasper, and Scottsboro like really like totally interchangeable? Or what do you think? Yeah, I would say I I would say that I could see any of those teams kind of weaving, but it's really going to depend on who performs well at the state tournament. Um, I could see some people saying that I ranked Gulf Shores a little high, but I definitely think that some of their guys underperformed at the state tournament this past year. So next, this next season, I think that we're going to see the Dolphins be, be a step ahead of everybody, honestly. All right. Well, and and then we're going to talk about A-Rap. And, 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 and to drive, round out this top ten, how um, are they? Are they your out of all four classifications? Are they the team that you feel the most confident that they're going to win a title? If you were to take all four of your number ones, are they your most? Are you most confident that they're going to win it, or is it someone else? And you don't have to tell me who. Uh, I would say that it's they're probably number two. They're number two. Okay, they're number two. I would say they're number two. I will, like you said, I won't say it because we'll get to them, but they're probably number two. So I don't know if you know this because I just wrote their state of the program, but did you know Will Kinnear, Will Kinnear, Will, Will Kinnear is now at ARAP? I, I did know that. I Woo! did know that because, and, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to call uh, Willie Cox out right now because he was telling me, he's like, man, I really wish Kinnear was still at Buckhorn so that I could wrestle him at heavyweight. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if if, if Will's going to go up to heavyweight. I, I've seen some pictures of him. He looks a little bit bigger than two twenty, right? Uh, but I don't know. Uh, he I, I don't know what what his plans are. The returning Fargo AA is I mean, he. I mean, we've seen him do some stuff. I, I watched him wrestle a bunch at the NHSCA's this past year. He looked scary on the mat. Like he's the nicest kid off the mat too. <laughs> he's like this gentle giant. He'll come up and be like, "How you doing?" But then he's just like, "It's yeah." He's pretty scary, honestly. Awesome, awesome. All right, so let's just do a rundown real quick. A Rab is one. Gulf Shores is two. Jasper is three. Scottsboro is four. Moody is five. Shelby County, really good team. Just sitting outside of that top five. Number six. Alexandria is seven. Southside Gaston is eight. Saint Clair, Saint Clair County is number nine. Beauregard rounds out the top ten uh, for five A. Um, I think it's a really good classification. It's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out. Um, how confident are you that 
that you have them in the right order? I mean, I think I kind of alluded to it. I'm probably not confident that they're in the right order, but I would say that I'm I'm pretty confident that this will end up being our top 10. Like yeah. maybe maybe that 10 spot is in our 10, 10, 9. I can see somebody else kind of floating in there, but I would say 1 through 8 is pretty solid. I mean, it might not be 1 through 8, but 1 through 8 will be 1 through 8. Got it. Got it. All right. I appreciate it. Maybe in about six weeks. We'll see how this all plays out. We'll touch base one more time uh, oh, yeah. before the postseason and talk about 5A again. Does that work? That works for me. All right, man. Okay.